بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو دا لیکچر آف کمیونیکیشن اسکل اینڈ دس از اباؤٹ ٹائپس آف کمیونیکیشن مائی نیم از لکمان شاہ ٹائپس آف کمیونیکیشن کمیونیکیشن از جنرلی کلاسیفائڈ ان ٹو فالوئنگ ٹائپس دا فرسٹ از وربل کمیونیکیشن اینڈ دیٹ از فردر ڈیوائڈیڈ ان ٹو اورل کمیونیکیشن and the written communication and second is non-verbal communication third is intrapersonal communication fourth is interpersonal communication fifth extrapersonal communication sixth mass communication and seventh media communication now verbal communication this is a very common uh, mode of communication which is used everywhere in our day-to-day -day life, in our official life, in organizational life, in institutional life, this verbal communication, the mode of this verbal, which is further divided into spoken and written, is almost used. Verbal communication, the oral professional are spending a lot of their times in speaking and listening to others. During verbal communication, an individual uses spoken and written words. Communication through spoken word is called oral communication, which is the first type of verbal communication. During oral or spoken communication, there is face-to-face -face interaction between the sender and the receiver. In this type of communication, there could be two or more than two persons who use spoken language as medium of communication. When we make presentations, deliver speeches, participate in group discussion, appear for interviews, or simply interact with somebody, we are involved in oral communication. And this is the most common and the largely used. And this is the first way of communication. Even when things were not in written form, this oral communication was there. So this is very old method of communication. Then comes the written communication. Written communication is complementary to spoken communication. The things which we can, can communicate uh, in spoken way that can also be communicated through, uh, through written communication. It is the formal way of communication. The formal, the official, and the legal matters are normally communicated through this written communication. The third point in written communication is that record keeping of written writing is very easy. The written things are easily uh, collected and easily archived for, uh, for a longer and we can refer back to this written communication anytime. And it is for long term. Uh, the spoken, for example, a person 100 years ago if someone is spoken by some person, so we are unable to have that spoken stretch. But what is written 100 years ago uh, that can be saved and definitely we have it right now in the 21st century. The fifth point of this series is that this type of communication is used for formal, official and legal matters. And uh, this is uh, it's uh, importance of the written communication. For example, uh, if uh, I am seeing that I am from Pakistan, I am the citizen of Pakistan. So nobody will acknowledge it and nobody will uh, admit or accept it unless until that uh, uh, I produce uh, CNIC, computerized national identity card. So that ID card is the formal, the official way to declare somebody the citizen of any country. Same is with uh, other matters, uh, with other legal and official matters. And last is this type of communication is authentic. Writing written form is also always authentic and is always taken as evidence and as uh, legal and official. Second, the verbal communication, the second part of this is written communication to written word is called written communication. In written communication, the sender uses written mode to transmit the message. Reports, proposals, letters, books, email, etc. are the examples in this category. This type of communication is used for documentation in an organization. Now look at this nonverbal communication. In this nonverbal communication, for example, starting from the left, a person is uh, having the zero 
from the thumb and the forefinger and so commonly in pakistani society this symbol is taken as everything is all right and all perfect but when it comes to the france the french people take it as worthless in japan this meant money in germany it is a, a root sign in malta in greece in brazil this is used for obscenity or for some taboo or sexual uh, 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 signaling then the thumbs up normally this thumb thumbs up is indicative of all okay but in australia and in iran it it take as a root and offensive word in nigeria in japan it represent the five and in th- turkey it is political rightist party symbol <laughs> then next the five finger with the open palm so commonly this this means in our society stop but in west africa it means you have five fathers and it is an offensive word in turkey it means you can you get nothing from me so look at these symbols non verbal communication the symbols and sign each and every symbol and sign uh, communicating a different meaning in different context and in different society non verbal communication a message that is communicating uh, communicated without words is an example of non verbal communication this process requires non verbal cues to be transmitted and received it can be further categorized into two parts body language body language for example personal appearance walk gestures facial exp- uh, appearances posture hand movements eye contact and etc then second is paralinguistic features paralinguistic features for example person's voice volume pitch rate pauses articulation modulation etc then comes the intrapersonal communication this intrapersonal communication is very important in interpersonal communication that take, takes place within one's own self individual reflection the thinking the meditation the planning the asar soliloquy self talking all are included in this intra communication when one is with one self that is called intra communication uh, intra personal communication this type of communication encompasses communicating with the divine in our prayer in our wishes and in our rites and ritual in fact then interpersonal this is a direct written oral type of communication between two or more persons and when a person is out of himself or herself and communicating with someone else so that is called interpersonal communication through conversation between individuals there occurs maximum interaction through words and gestures and then extra personal communication sometimes we communicate with non human entities like birds animals dogs pets we speak to parrots cows and our pet dogs cats etc to follow our instruction and they respond with happiness by moving around us or by wagging their tails and this type of communication is extra personal communication and then mass communication the book press cinema tv radio internet etc are the tools of mass communication the communication through these media to the public is an example of mass communication the speeches delivered by political leaders are by profit to the public is also an example of mass communication when communication is carried out at large or to the larger mass or to the larger people is called mass communication and then seven and the last is media communication it is communication that takes place to electronic media like computer mobile phones lcd video etc among these the computer is one of the most influential media in every official and business world today communication has become an inevitable factor in our daily life like breathing eating and sleeping and this is the end of this lecture if you had some question you can ask